and welcome back. This is really probably way too quiet for you to hear. Yep. So I'm gonna talk a little louder. Uh, you know, first things first, always safety. First we're gonna go over some of the tools we're gonna use so that it's easier for you to identify. And uh, we'll talk about a little bit why we're using these tools. I oh, use a impact gun. The screws on the bus are really hard to get out, if it's, especially if you just got your bus. So the impact gun helps you with strippage issues for the screws not to strip out. We'll have the impact gun and we'll unscrew the screws that are holding in the window. Then uh, I got a jigsaw here with the metal, with the metal tip for basic metal. It's like 24 teeth per inch, made, made from medium metal. I've got some caulking, pry bar, hammer, and a square somewhere. All right, let's get started. The cool things that we did is that we took the roof off the bus and saved all the metal. So instead of buying new metal, we're utilizing it for the windows. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this to, to the correct width and length. So we're gonna hand dandy. I didn't say this in the beginning. I kind of figured that everyone had one of these. So, uh, it's a little uh, boat at the end. So I'd like to get as many pieces of uh, window. I actually have two windows today that I need to do. So I'm gonna see, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a hole from where the speakers were. We kinda have to work with what we got here. Draw like a five-year-old. Very key to draw like a five-year-old. You have to have fun. When we cut this, it's gonna metal shavings are gonna hit us, and it might be startling. So make sure that if you're doing it, try to go slow and continue forward, even if uh, you get a little bit. And that's why we wear the safety goggles, because any of these tiny shavings could go right into your eyeball, and that would not be cool. Another thing is. These will slice your hand open pretty good. Uh, I work in a machine shop and I see people cut their hands open all the time. So we're gonna throw it on the ground so we'll probably step on it later. I also wanna give a shout out to Natasha because she was right. And I do have to, the reason why I'm doing this is because I left out a window thinking that we could have a nice beautiful opening in our living room. But when I decided to put the TV on the wall, I realized I didn't have a wall, I had it a window. And I thought that a mount would work, but the TV's too big. So we have to put a wall there. So Natasha was right, and that's why we're doing this. Yeah, I'm gonna save that for future use. Yeah, yeah just... Remember yeah. that, remember wait, wait, that time you say I'm never right? Time, like, you're right, like, it's gonna be like a regular video, and then it's gonna be this video of me <laughs> saying, Natasha was right. And then it's gonna cut back to our regular video. No, I'm just gonna, whenever you say I'm right and I get it on camera, I'm gonna compile an entire video of you just saying, yeah, and then I Natasha was right, on. Natasha was like, right, Natasha called, was uh, right again, and again, like, and uh, again. Can you spit? So maybe Natasha's What's that? What is that? opinion should be listened to the first hey, time. Corey's right a lot too. <laughs> maybe not a lot, but Corey's right sometimes. <laughs> things right here they're actually very convenient that uh, if you cut these break where the groove is up on each side it's actually the correct height for your windows so we remove this this piece here we just remove this piece here let me see. Remove this piece here. Yeah, it covers, so there's the piece of steel that is the sidewall, and it covers up that, that gap so that it doesn't get inside of the bus. What I have done, I don't know what other people did because I didn't see them do anything, is I took it, and I put it on the inside. Uh, the reason being is, if you don't put this back, 
this will be super flimsy. So when you're trying to screw it to something, there's actually nothing there to screw it to. This the wall will actually just bow in instead it would instead of adhering to anything. So I try to put it in and line up the holes again. Uh, it gives it stabilization and a window seal on the inside as well. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of metal we're actually going to slide it in between the piece that we just had and the and the uh, outer outer wall. Uh, we're going to slide it in and then slide it up and screw it in. There are two rivets on either side from the roof. We didn't want to remove any of the roof rivets so we have to take this the jigsaw and cut two little notches into the corner of the metal as you see here. And we're doing that so that the piece fits around those rivets and so we're not damaging the roof rivets or removing the seal of the roof at all. Impact row with the metal bit, right? Yes, yeah, that, that's what she said. And uh, I'm gonna screw out all these holes with a very small bit because it is almost impossible to put in the screws. You could try to use self-tapping screws, but the thing I found is that the holes are already pretty darn big and self-tapping screws only get so wide before they become uh, nuts on the end. And once, once they're nuts, you can't use them. You know, they're nuts. Um, you have to use the they're, they're bolts, not nuts, because I guess it's the other side, not that side. But uh, they're little bolts, and they don't match these, and it would be really aggravating if on one window you had like two screws that were self-tapping screws that were not the right ones. So when I was doing this, put all my little screws in my kangaroo pouch here. What I did is I put one screw in the middle here. I didn't tighten it all the way down yet. That way, if I need to adjust it left or right, I can. Now, even though I struggled a little bit, you may think when you're doing this that uh, it looks a lot, it looks like he's doing it a lot easier than I am. It actually took a lot of effort and about, I think we did like six windows here before I got pretty efficient at it. Uh, I think the key to success here is to have it prepped and ready because once you get this in, you don't want to struggle pushing it up or pushing it down. It's a good way to get cut and it's just a really good way to get frustrated fast. So make sure that you take your crowbar and break, break this loose, that glue behind it and pull it out with a pry bar. Make sure it's all off. Make sure your whole area is prepped and ready for this to go in. Don't try to jump the gun like I did in the first one. I was really gung-ho to do it. I uh, didn't slow down and assess what I was doing and I just tried to slam it together because I was like, I know what I'm doing. Uh, and it took me like six and a half hours to do one window and it was not fun, so. And you were trying to do it different than you're doing it now and Natasha said, do it this way. And you said, no, I'm not doing it that way. And then Natasha was right again. Natasha was not necessarily correct. Natasha, I was correct. You're doing it exactly how I told you to do it first. We could have went the other way. It was a <laughs> Natasha was right. Anyways, so I screwed it in the middle. I aligned it to where I wanted it. Make sure that it's all seated everywhere. And then I'm gonna get really loud here for a second and bend, bend the trim back down where I pried it up. We used a silicone based caulking for the windows. We're finding out now that that doesn't age well, especially where we are in New Hampshire. So we're now using a different caulking. I'll make sure to link that in the blog post that corresponds with this video. And I will put that blog's post in the description box below. I have not mastered the art of the caulk gun. I don't think either of us have done that. It is. It's ridiculous. It is. So there's special people out there that should be paid millions of dollars to do this the right way. If you go on YouTube, they're like, Apply it and scrape across. And it's like magic and it's perfect. And you're just like, well, go to hell. And uh. Corey used the jigsaw to cut off the edges of these ribs. And these ribs are ones that we pulled directly from the bus. Corey also used a really old school grinder that my dad had just to smooth out the edge so it's not so jagged and sharp. So now you see here why I did that cut so that these can sit flush. 
If you reutilize the same strip on the same same space, the holes that were previous there will line up. Not every single one of these are the exact same. So if you don't put them back where you got them, they won't line up. And when you go to drill your holes on this side where you can't see, you'll end up drilling nothing or into the frame of the bus, which is not fun. Our camera ended up dying, so I didn't show the final touches, but essentially all we had to do was put screws in the bottom here, and then also, of course, the peat parts were metal touches metal, and they're separate pieces that they got a ample amount of caulking and glue to make sure that there were no holes. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like. I would love it if you consider subscribing. This channel is really small still, and it would be nice to get to 100 subscribers so that I can get a custom channel link, because I really want that. <laughs> so if you would consider subscribing, I appreciate it. As always, blog posts are linked in the description box below. I break down our entire budget and how much money we've spent on the project, and I break down pros and cons of each material that we buy, and I write out in detail mistakes we've made along the way too. So there's lots to learn over on the blog, so do consider checking it out. I update it frequently. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, remember to create love and travel on. See you next week. Bye! Joshua was right. <laughs>